on the streets of Jakarta amid scenes unprecedented in 30 years in Indonesia. Protesters hold aloft a two kilometer long petition in support of the woman who has suddenly been thrown to the forefront of the country's burgeoning democracy movement. The government is trying to shut out Megawati Sukarna Putri from Indonesian politics, fearing her growing credibility and support. But their clumsy attempts to do so have turned her into a popular hero and made her the focus for all those demanding democratic change. Mobbed by supporters, her car arrives at the headquarters of the Indonesian Democratic Party. Megawati was the head of this small opposition group until last month when the government engineered her removal. Since then, her headquarters have been occupied by thousands of her supporters, their numbers growing in the face of increasingly strident threats from the authorities. Her calls for freedom are met with near hysteria. While Megawati was addressing her supporters, the man behind her removal, President Suharto, was meeting regional foreign ministers. The country's 75-year-old leader has ruled Indonesia for 30 years, since he seized power from the country's founding president, Sukarno, Megawati's father. merupakan negara hukum bukan negara kekuasaan sehingga apa yang terjadi di dalam tubuh atau internal partai kami itu merupakan satu hal yang sangat mereka tidak senangi karena kekerasan tindakan intimidasi lalu rekayasa sesuatu pada masing-masing orang merupakan bagian daripada ketidakbenaran dan merusak daripada hak azazi manusia itu sendiri. The shadowy nature of Indonesia's politics is frequently likened to the country's traditional puppetry, with the main players hidden from view, only the shadows of their manipulations to be seen. Opposition parties exist in name only, their moves controlled by Indonesia's aging leader, Suharto. Megawati challenged that. She was perceived to be a threat and had to be removed for what she did and who she was. Her father, though ousted by Suharto in 1967, is still revered as the father of the nation. The name Sukarno still has a powerful appeal. Sukarno still is still alive in the mind of Indonesian common people. The only leader that can challenge Suharto is only Megawati. If you if you see the oppositionist leaders, and then the only uh, leader that potential that potentially uh, can uh, challenge Suharto is Megawati because he has the requirement for that. He, she has a charisma and she has also political background. So sensitive are the authorities to the name Sukarno that newspaper editors have been asked to refer to Megawati by her married name and not Sukarno Putri. In the growing atmosphere of protest, only some have complied. If the government's aim in arranging the ouster of Megawati from the leadership of her party had been to somehow neutralize her as a political opponent, then clearly that strategy has failed. Rarely in Indonesia's recent history has protest been so widespread or so bold, with Megawati quickly emerging as the focus for a wide range of pent-up political frustrations and anger. Behind many of the protests are radical student groups with their own agenda. 
but rallying around Megawati in the hope she can be the catalyst for change. Some, like Budi man Sujat Miko, are being sought by the security forces as agitators. Budiman took us to a secret location in Jakarta, from where a nationwide network of student activists is controlled. Ultimate aim is abstract, we could say the democratization. Yeah? The democratization. A lot of things in Indonesia should be democratized. The national leadership, the function of parliament, the function of the political party, the function of mass organization, uh, redefinition of the role of the military in Indonesia. The frustration isn't confined to Jakarta. The countryside is rife with land disputes, pitting poor villagers against powerful government-backed developers. Here in central Java, the economy has certainly improved under Suharto, but villagers complain the new wealth is concentrated in a small number of hands. And here too, Megawati's PDI has remained loyal to her and not to the new leadership installed by the government. Local PDI workers are canvassing support at village level, where the name Sukarno, as a champion of the poor, is held in high esteem. Crucially, too, Megawati has gained the support of powerful Muslim groups. Indonesia is the world's largest Muslim country, and the biggest Islamic organization here, with 40 million members, has publicly backed Sukarno's daughter. Under a new moon, a performance of the Ramayana unfolds, an ancient tale of good against evil and of palace intrigue. Through folklore and mysticism, the Javanese look for parallels with contemporary politics. But as yet, passions haven't become inflamed. And in Jakarta, the protests are largely good-natured. But there's growing anxiety outside the PDI headquarters, where the military are never far away. The army calls these gatherings illegal and subversive, and there are fears the military will try and crush the democracy movement. At her home, Megawati, diplomatic and restrained, has continued to meet delegations of party members from around the country. She's urged caution and called on the army to remember their role is to serve all the people. The outcome of this confrontation is difficult to predict, though democracy does now have a new champion, and politically, Indonesia is entering uncharted waters. Ian Williams, Channel 4 News, Jakarta.